its uh, sections like muscles in the thigh and other places go on trembling and sh showing signs of life. Because immediately life uh, is transferred from the center to those smaller centers around. But then there cannot be any guarantee for its continuation. For a while it is just like a tamasha, it goes on and then ultimately the life ebbs out from every other center as well. This is exactly the phenomena to which Hazrat Muslim was is referring, that had Medina and Mecca, <coughs> the real centers of Islam, been the real true centers having all the power and ultimate attraction point of all the sub-centers, then these centers would grow in stature and in influence and every other center would be a subservient center. But this is not what happened. They were deserted. They were given no importance from then on. The sources of attraction became um, cities like Baghdad and Bukhara and Samarkand and you heard so much of their glory and danger that almost Mecca and Medina were forgotten outshone by their gl later glories acquired by these, these cities. So this is, uh, this was when the bell began to ring spelling danger and nobody noticed. So Hazrat Muslim Mahudar had a very deep insight into uh, the philosophy of history. So he is quite right when he says that. <laughs> Now, a third question or will you give a chance to anybody else? Yes, sir, they have chance. They have chance? Come back if you want to. Anyone wants to say a thing or two, please? <coughs> yes. <coughs> well, uh, Hazur, the slaughtering uh, of the animal, <coughs> uh, they, um, uh, we slaughter by nine. And uh, these people, they say that uh, we should stun it and then slaughter it. Um, and they say it's cruel and painful to the animal. Um, how do we convince these people that it's not painful and uh, it's not cruel to the animal? By slaughtering um, the animal. How do you do that? Tell me. <laughs> now they stun it first and then uh, slaughter it afterwards. So we slaughter straight away with knife. Right. So uh, the fact is that when you slaughter with the knife, what is what happens is that immediately the blood supply to the brain is cut off, and uh, the life rapidly ebbs out of brain, with the result that its uh, power of sense and feeling is left without energy. It's spilled out. So it is, unless somebody is slaughtered, he wouldn't know what happens to him. It's difficult to conceive in such a situation, but obviously, apparently, this is what we observe, that when the jugular vein, vein is cut and the artery, main artery is also severed, then the main blood supply route is, is cut off. And when there is no power, there is no sense left. There has to be an energy uh, to, to remain conscious and to feel. So that is the Islamic way. Now when they stun, the supply of blood to the brain continues. And nobody can guess what is happening in the brain. But we know this phenomena from uh, certain patients who are drugged and made apparently unconscious. But during that unconsciousness, we know they have nightmares and highly excited activity of the brain. Sometimes they want to shriek and they can't. So we don't know what may have happened inside when they stun. So both are mute points. One can't be preferred over others. But one has the religious authority. Other has not. One is told to us by God. So without deciding the fundamentals, how can we decide these minor issues? 
if it has been clearly laid down by Allah and uh, positively you can't establish the superiority of one system to the other, then obviously which comes from the source, if that source is, is, uh, is really an existent source, then that should be preferred. He knows the inside stories of the animals he himself has created. So in this regard, whenever a religious phenomena is to be discussed, then a religious comparison is to be made. Comparison with other religions. What is their instructions about slaughter? Then we will be within the realm of reasonableness. When you discuss these matters with these people who are irreligious, any system they invent has no morality and no deeper knowledge of, of uh, the, the nature of life. So they cannot convince, I mean, they, they, they have no reason to feel superior because, because uh, they have no real solid argument in their favor. Now, again, these are very small minor points of the irreligious world in the name of being uh, le uh, less cruel to the animals or in the name of being benign to the animals. They have these small objections against religion. But how they behave to the animals themselves, they completely forget. The whole life is made miserable for an animal which is kept for slaughter and raised for slaughter. If you see those houses where these animals are kept and raised for meat, they are almost straight jacketed there and made to eat and eat and do nothing. They are not even permitted to sleep enough sleep because they think that if they are permitted to sleep more, they would eat, eat less. So artificially, the uh, days are created even in the night through strong lights and uh, they are not permitted to move otherwise they will lose energy. So they have no life whatsoever left and when they are killed they say let's be very benign and very kind to them and we don't know whether they have actually been benign or not. They're just hollow people, nothing to support their, their philosophy. They are so cruel to the chicks, you see if the, how the, they are brought in very small um, pigeon houses where they can't move. They are kept and fattened and fattened. This is the life they have uh, permitted them. And when the slaughter comes, they wrangle this, uh, I mean, strangle them to death and say this is a better way of slaughtering. While when you sever the artery, you know that immediately the, that feeling is finished. Moreover, there is much more pain in, in animal life caused by the laws of nature. So much so that uh, simply you cannot avoid these things. So one quick last operation is, uh, is a must. Now, any other question, please? Shall this, uh, Hayat Sahib? I think it's now your turn. You, you have justified. Your patience has to be rewarded. <laughs> These two gentlemen prepare their questions, you know, for the benefit of the rest. Assalamu alaikum Hazur. Hazur, we know that Khana Kaaba is the very first house of Allah Ta'ala, built by Hazrat Adam alayhi salam for the worship. Muslims are instructed to face towards it during their prayers, while previously the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his companions faced towards Battle Muqaddas for some time. The question is, since when and why the Baitul Muqaddas was made the direction of prayer while Khana Kaaba was also in existence? Existence. <coughs> Mr. Adu, why are you sitting? <laughs> <laughs> 